Anyway, so we are on to page 385, question number 66. The last paragraph performs which of the following functions in the passage? When this happens, we want to go back and just review briefly what actually happens in the last paragraph. Um, and from my notes, and if you didn't take notes, you could just go glance at that. Um, uh, that the last paragraph is this brazen case where a um, U.S. company that's actually owned by a Dutch conglomerate uh, lodges a complaint um, to the ITC against a Canadian company, which turns out to be not only a um, U.S. company, but one of the second largest domestic producers of, in this case, salt, rock salt. So, uh, basically, uh, the last paragraph is an example of, of um, how convoluted and how, uh, how convoluted these uh, legal protections versus import competition can be and how foreign companies can use it against domestic ones. So we want something like that in our answer choice, I think. So, does the last paragraph summarize the discussion thus far and suggest additional areas for research? No, it doesn't summarize and it doesn't suggest research. Definitely not A. It presents a recommendation based on the evidence presented earlier. There's no recommendation. Uh, so, uh, this, uh, th see how easy it is to eliminate these? It's, it's only taking me as long to eliminate them uh, as it does because I'm reading them out loud. If I were um, doing these to myself, um, the first one, I would stop after it says it summarizes the discussion. I would just say, no, and I would cross it off. And then B, it presents a recommendation. I would stop there and cross it off. But if I did that, you wouldn't necessarily be able to follow my reasoning. So, you know, everything, ta everything takes longer when you do it out loud. You won't be doing this out loud on your real GMAT. If you do, they will probably kick you out because you're supposed to be quiet. So anyway, um, C, it discusses an exceptional case in which the results expected by the author of the passage were not obtained. Okay, so um, for at, in the beginning of this, this is one of those half right, half wrong things. It is an exceptional case. The, the author actually says it's a brazen case. Brazen means uh, bold or outrageous. And um, it's that. It's certainly an outrageous case. But it's not an exceptional case in the more literal definition of exception. Um, Exceptional can just mean outstanding, and that could be synonymous with brazen. Exceptional uh, ultimately, though, means um, having the qualities of an exception, something that is not according to the rules. So um, the exceptional case in which the results expected by the author of the passage were not obtained, no, this is actually uh, exactly what the author would have expected uh, because the author says that these legal protections and the ITC and stuff, it's a little bit messed up. It's not C. In fact, C is a 180 of what we're after. Um, D, it introduces an additional area of concern not mentioned earlier, no. Uh, and that leaves us with E, and so if we were in a hurry, we could just select this one pretty confidently because it's really pretty clearly not any of the other answer choices. But um, E says, it cites a specific case that illustrates a problem presented more generally in the previous paragraph. The previous paragraph talked about how the foreign companies can use the ITC against U.S. companies. And then here in par paragraph four, we have exactly that happening. So, um, yeah, that's awesome. That's, that's totally what we were after. That does not look like a happy smile. There, that's a little bit better. Um, it, it is, in fact, answer choice E. All right, on to 67. Okay, whoops, let's get rid of this. 67. The passage warns of which of the following dangers? Well, you know, so there's not a particular part of the passage that really specifically, well, I don't, you know, just off the top of my head, I don't remember a specific warning in there. The whole thing is about how it hurts more companies than it helps and how foreign companies can use it against the United States. So it'll probably be something like that. Um, a, companies in the United States may receive no protection from imports unless they actively seek protection from import competition. The passage does not say that. Um, that's going way too far beyond what the passage says. It just says that one of the ways that uh, companies can get import protect protection is by going through the ITC. Does the passage warn that companies that seek legal protection from support... Or, uh, 
Sometimes there's problems reading out loud because your brain decides that it's seeing other words other than, or maybe that's just my brain. Anyway, companies that seek legal protection from import competition may incur legal costs that far exceed any possible gain. Legal costs are never mentioned. So it's totally not B. Uh, C. Companies that are United States owned but operate internationally may not be eligible for protection from import competition under the laws of the countries in which their plants operate. This is another one of those ones that, so this may be true, uh, the, and this is one where your own outside, outside knowledge, if you have experience with global business and internationalization, this may well be very common. I don't know. I teach GMAT over the internet. Um, however, what foreign companies and or more specifically foreign countries. What foreign countries and foreign governments do is outside the scope of this passage. You notice how they keep bringing this up. Um, clearly this is something that uh, people who deal in this line of work probably deal with all the time. Uh, different import restrictions placed by different companies or countries, um, different countries on different companies. Um, but again, it's outside the scope of the passage and therefore not correct. Um, D, companies that are not United States owned may seek legal protection from import competition under United States import relief laws. Well, that's exactly what happens in paragraph 4 in the specific, uh, specific example. And paragraph 3, of course, stated that as a general concept, so that sounds really good. Um, e, companies in the United States that import raw materials may have to pay duties on those materials. Psst. Raw materials are never mentioned. So yeah, it's definitely D that uh, foreign foreign companies based in the U.S. Um, can seek protection against U.S. companies, or just seek protection, um, import protection in general, potentially from other international companies. Okay, number sixty-eight. The passage suggests that which of the following is most likely to be true of United States trade laws. So the passage suggests is another inference question. Um, and when we find out about US trade laws, yeah, I think it's going to e either be the stuff in the second or third paragraph because the first one is just more about the ITC. The, the, for the fourth paragraph is just this specific case. So how companies, how this affects things at the company level is really paragraph two and three. So our answer, if, if anywhere, is probably going to be there, but we need to see what those what the answer choices actually say. Uh, does the passage suggest that United States trade laws A will eliminate the practice of dumping products in the United States? Um, no. <laughs> uh, if it would eliminate the practice, they wouldn't have people claiming it. Um, so um, it's still clearly going on, or people are at least alleging that it's going on. Uh, B, will those laws enable manufacturers in the United States to compete more profitably outside the United States? Again, what goes on in foreign countries is outside the scope of the passage. Um, C, they will affect United States trade with Canada more negatively than trade with other nations. This one's meant to catch the skimmers because Canada gets mentioned in the fourth paragraph, but really... Um, in the passage, nobody cares about Canada more than other countries. Um, D, those, uh, those that help one unit within a parent company will not necessarily help other units in the company. Hmm. So back in line, back in, uh, I guess it was the second paragraph. Yeah. Um, yeah, parent company appears in the second paragraph, so let's go, just go back and read that. Um, the complexity of these relationships makes it unlikely that a system of import relief laws will meet the strategic needs of all the units under the same parent company. And Choice D says those that help one unit within a parent company will not necessarily help other units in the, parent, in the company. So that sounds a lot like what's in the passage, but not exactly the same, and that's why this is an inference. Let's check E. Uh, the, the, so we're talking about laws. Those that are applied to international companies will accomplish their intended result. Well, nothing in the passage really accomplishes its intended result, so uh, it has to be D. Ta-da! 
Oh, I hit the wrong button again. Well, we were almost done anyway. Uh, page 385. I will be glad when I'm done with reading comprehension and I can just go back to erasing after every question. Um, for those of you who weren't watching the broadcast before, of course, that's what I did after every quant question, so that's why it's force of habit for me to erase the whole thing. Anyway, question number 69. It can be inferred from the passage that the author believes which of the following about the complaint mentioned in the last paragraph. Well, uh, the, the last paragraph, the author mentions that it was a brazen um, case, and brazen, like I said, means bold or outrageous, maybe even... Um, it has a kind of a negative uh, connotation, actually. So it's not just bold, where bold is can be brave, you know? Um, brazen can be perhaps contrary to what people think somebody ought to do, daring to the point of um, infringing on the expectations or rights of others. I made that, I mean, you know, that's just my attempt at a definition. You may want to look it up later. Maybe I'll even look it up while you all are reading the past the next passage, and then I'll read you the dictionary definition, because I can do that in a live broadcast. Anyway, question number 69 uh, was about the uh, complaint mentioned in the last paragraph and what the author believes. Does the author believe, A, the ITC acted unfairly toward the complainant in its investigation? So a quick scan of paragraph four reveals that all we know about what the ITC did is that they investigated this claim. There is no uh, mention of how this was resolved, okay? So uh, it cannot be that the ITC acted unfairly. The ITC just investigated for all we know. Uh, B, the complaint violated the intent of import relief laws. The word brazen might actually imply that, so we'll keep that. Um, C, the response of the ITC to the complaint provided suitable relief from unfair trade practices to the complainant. Again, we don't find out how the ITC actually acted in this case, just that they investigated. Or it investigated. The good people of the ITC investigated. Uh, choice D, the ITC did not have access to appropriate information concerning the case. Uh, pff, that, uh, sorry, maybe that sounded attractive to you. I don't mean to be dismissive of... Uh, your choices, you out there on the internet, but um, we appropriate information does not appear anywhere in the passage, even the idea of it. It's not about how the case is investigated, just who was making the case against whom. That's what the problem is with uh, the one in the last paragraph. Uh, choice E, each of the companies involved in the complaint acted in its own best interest. Hmm. The author might believe that. Okay, so, um, but then let's actually uh, just review that again. So we have a choice between B, the complaint violated the intent of import relief laws. Again, it says the most brazen case, and then the, it follows with um, the final sentence is the quote-unquote United States company claiming injury was a subsidiary of a Dutch conglomerate, while the quote Canadian companies included a subsidiary of a Chicago firm that was the second largest domestic producer of rock salt. So the one, the company that was being investigated was the second largest domestic producer of rock salt, and these laws are meant to protect domestic companies. So that really does sound like violating the intent of import relief laws. Whereas choice E, each of the companies involved in the complaint acted in its own best interest. Um, well, um, of course it's in the complaining company's best interest to um, get relief if possible. Um, I don't think we can really say that the, uh, the uh, what would we call the, not the complainant, but the, the target of the complaint. The target of the complaint probably was acting in its own best interest, but it certainly wasn't in its own best interest to be the subject of a complaint. Also, um, the language of the, the fourth paragraph really does sound more like answer choice B than answer choice E. The author doesn't really say, well, they were just doing their jobs or anything like that. Oh, so uh, cross off E and choose B. Okay.